Hi guys, today I'm going to discuss some issues related to the treatment of osteosarcoma in animals. Uh, as always, please subscribe to our channel, and if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the area just below the video on our YouTube channel. Now, osteosarcoma can occur virtually anywhere in dogs. Uh, the most common sites that we would see would be the distal radius, the proximal humerus, the distal femur, the proximal tibia, although we commonly still see it in the distal tibia, proximal femur, you can see it anywhere in the ribs. Uh, the scapula can also be affected. Uh, we can see them in the skull, particularly in the mandible, and anywhere along the spine, the pelvis can also be affected. The only place where I have rarely, if ever, seen osteosarcoma is in the elbow of dogs, and although it is reported there, um, I haven't seen it very frequently. Uh, you can even see it, although typically it's in metaphyseal bones, sometimes you can see it in diaphyseal bones as well. And when it occurs in a diaphyseal location, it makes treatment options a little bit more um, uh, varied uh, because limb salvage in those locations can be a little bit easier. Now, when discussing um, any tumor with owners, but particularly with osteosarcoma, um, I like to discuss two different issues related to the primary tumor and to the risk of secondary spread. And with osteosarcoma, we need to remember that virtually all dogs, almost 100% uh, almost of dogs, are eventually going to die of their tumors. And generally, the cause of death is... Um, is secondary spread if the primary tumor is treated. Now, issues or prognostic issues related to secondary spread, so the prognostic factors, as we like to call them, um, the most important and clinically relevant prognostic factor would be the size of the tumor. And it's been shown repeatedly that bigger tumors um, are worse uh, prognosis than smaller tumors. The other thing that we like to look at is the location of the tumor. Um, with proximal humerus carrying a poorer prognosis. So proximal uh, humerus would be bad, and um, locations like the um, metatarsal, metacarpal, and mandibular sites um, would have a more favorable prognosis. Now, the location that we typically see osteosarcoma metastasis would be the lungs um, in about, or at least 60% of cases, and then in other bones in about 40% of cases. And that suggests that it's always a good idea to take chest x-rays, uh, preferably three-view x-rays. Um, and uh, if you have it available, then a nuclear bone scan um, is also not a bad idea. Now, there have been some studies that have looked at taking survey CT scans of the whole body, and they found that they are relatively insensitive in picking up secondary spread. The other prognostic factor that we can use to predict the incidence of secondary spread would be bone alkaline phosphatase. Um, and so in dogs that are not on steroids um, and do not have evidence of liver disease, the elevation of alkaline phosphatase on routine blood work is a poor prognostic indicator. Now, chemotherapy has been shown to be effective in preventing or delaying secondary spread uh, in dogs with osteosarcoma. Um, and we usually say that it kind of doubles to triples the survival time as long as the primary tumor is being treated. And the chemotherapy protocols that you can use would be carboplatin. That's probably the, um, the least invasive and has least effect on quality of life. Um, adriamycin or a combination of the two. Those are the, you know, those are the two most commonly used uh, chemotherapeutic agents in dogs. 
Now, with respect to the treatment of the primary tumor, we have several different treatment options available. Um, the least aggressive thing would be just pain relief. And with pain relief, we're talking about a median survival time of only about three months. And death in these cases is usually due to euthanasia uh, from intractable pain. Now, the next most aggressive thing that we can do is palliative radiation therapy alone. Now, palliative radiation is generally performed uh, weekly for a total of four doses, and we usually don't see much in the way of side effects in patients that are treated palliatively. Uh, you'll see some hair loss in me with a really severe moist desquamation of the skin and really severe dermatitis. Now, this image here shows our radiation therapy machine, um, and we use orthovoltage. Um, and uh, orthovoltage is ideally suited to bone because bone is going to have a selective uptake of radiation compared to the surrounding soft tissues. This image shows a linear accelerator, which is um, a newer technology for the administration of radiation therapy in animals. Um, and it, uh, the benefit of a linear accelerator is that it allows more effective exclusion of normal tissues, so your side effects are going to be reduced. Uh, the problem with a uh, linear accelerator is that there's somewhat limited uh, availability in Australia with machines um, present only in Brisbane and in Sydney. Um, but if you're in one of those locations, then a linear accelerator can allow really effective treatment of, uh, of bone cancer. Uh, in dogs and uh, with the added advantage of potentially reducing side effects. Now, palliative radiation therapy alone is associated with a median survival time of about four months. But when we add palliative radiation with chemotherapy, uh, we get a much improved survival time um, in the neighborhood of about 10 to 12 months with most protocols. And this has become one of my preferred treatment options for osteosarcoma uh, in uh, locations where it's applicable. Now, the next most aggressive treatment would be amputation uh, of the affected limb. And generally, when we do an amputation, we amputate all the way up either via scapulectomy or coxofemoral disarticulation. Now, amputation alone is associated with a median survival time of about five months. But when we add chemotherapy, that increases the survival time out to, um, again, about the 10 to 12 months. Now, most dogs uh, go through chemotherapy without any significant side effects. About 80% are not going to have anything major. Um, and then about 20% are going to have uh, some degree of side effects with about 5% requiring um, hospitalization or reduction of dose. Um, and um, I'm only aware of a couple of patients that have died as a result of the neutropenia associated with the chemotherapy. Now, the last treatment option that I'm going to discuss is limb salvage surgery. And the classic location is the distal radius, although uh, most of the ulna can be spared um, and uh, as well as diaphyseal tibia, femur, and humerus. Um, the majority of the scapula can also be removed, and some people have removed the entire scapula with reasonable clinical success. Now, during limb salvage surgery, the tumor is identified. Um, an arthrotomy is performed at the radiocarpal joint, and the entire bone is removed. It is then replaced with um, some kind of structure, and that can include um, allograft bone or an endoprosthetic. The other thing that we sometimes do is transfer, transfer the ipsilateral ulna, if it's not affected, into the radius position called a manus transfer, um, and that is associated with a reasonable success rate and lower infection rate as well. Now, this image shows a um, radial osteosarcoma with an allograft in place. So this is all allografted bone. And then there's a large bone plate that's placed uh, to arthrodese the joint and to um, stabilize or fix the 
allograft to the proximal radius as well. Now this is what an allograft based limb salvage surgery looks like radiographically. The other option is to use an endoprosthetic and this is a procedure that I developed um, over the last uh, approximately 20 years. This shows a first generation endoprosthetic implant where we've taken out the entire bone and replaced it with a metal strut. Um, success rate with this procedure is very similar to allograft based procedures with the benefit that uh, you don't have to have a bone bank. Um, you can uh, just store these on the shelf and they can be ready to use at any point. In addition, the surgery is uh, generally a little bit quicker than uh, an allograft-based uh, procedure because uh, with allograft-based surgery, the uh, medullary canal has to be filled with bone cement, which has to dry, um, et cetera, whereas uh, the endoprosthetic basically is, can, can be uh, removed from the package and basically placed straight um, in situ. Uh, the disadvantage of endoprosthetic-based uh, limb salvage surgery is that the proximal screws are at risk of failure um, and uh, they either can be pulled out of the bone or they can be sheared off at the screw head, screw interface. Now, there have been some advances in that regard uh, with second generation implants where uh, we use either locking plates or there's even some consideration for uh, bone ingrowth into the endoprosthetic. Now this is what the endoprosthetic based limb salvage surgery looks like, uh, where you can see that large metal uh, strut that's just replaced the bone. Um, the idea is that these dogs are often not going to live more than a couple of years. And so uh, we don't really have to worry too much about implant failure and cycling uh, because of the limited survival time. Now the median survival time with limb salvage surgery is equivalent to uh, what we see with amputation with the disadvantage that there are multiple complications related to limb salvage surgery that you don't have with amputation. And those would include infection uh, in um, about 40% of cases, um, implant, uh, implant failure, um, probably in about 20% of cases, um, and recurrence uh, in about 10% of cases. Um, now, interestingly, with infection, um, we do have um, a really interesting phenomenon, which is that you get a doubling of survival time when they get infected. And what we think is happening um, uh, is that the immune system is uh, being turned on non-specifically by the presence of the infection, and then you're getting uh, uh, killing of the tumor cells by uh, kind of an innocent bystander effect. Anyway, so that's uh, pretty much all of osteosarcoma. Basically, you want to make sure that you are uh, at least taking thoracic radiographs or thoracic CT scans before you treat these patients, and then uh, consider the treatment options, including um, conservative management, palliative radiation, uh, palliative radiation with chemotherapy, amputation alone, amputation with chemotherapy, and limb salvage surgery with chemotherapy. Um, please, uh, again, subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to post them, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thanks for listening.